Welcome back to LooTube for yet another 2019 college football team season preview and prediction game by game. You guys know how we do this. These are detailed, in-depth videos. We've been covering teams from coast to coast, power five teams, uh, independent teams like Notre Dame, group of five teams like App State and Marshall and Memphis, and we have even more still on the list to do. We're going to do these videos all the way up to the start of college football season. We're going to try to fit in as many as we possibly can. Uh, and up today, back into the Big 12, another team. It's been sort of a theme. I think this is, I don't know, the third or fourth video in a row we've done where the team is breaking in a new coaching staff. But up today, Kansas State. Hey, good morning. It's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on YouTube today. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it also and to an addition to that as well. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I post college football videos almost every single day of the year, and some of them are even watchable. A lot of them lately uh, have been, in my opinion. Check out my phone called a Dish Network. Uh, yeah, that one was pretty popular. Uh, anyway, uh, hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying this series of videos that we're doing. I put a lot of time, effort, and ener energy into these videos. Do I get everything right? No, obviously I don't. And I love the comments that tell me uh, I'm no expert. Uh, obviously, I'm no I'm a college football fan just like you, sir. Uh, that's, you know, the only difference is I'm on video talking about it and people are watching me and you're hiding in a basement typing in the comment section. That's the only difference. Uh, but in any case, thumbs up this video. It means a lot. Doesn't take you any time at all or cost you any money, but it really helps me out a lot. All right, let's get on with Kansas State. All right, like I mentioned, Kansas State, yet another team breaking in a new coaching staff this year. Of course, longtime Kansas State head coach Bill Snyder. This guy was hired the day before Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. Retires last year after a 5-7 and seven season, right? 3-6 and six in the Big 12. Uh, who'd they lose to? Mississippi State, of course. Lost to Vandy the year before that. Uh, Mississippi State, West Virginia, Texas. None of those are very surprising. Baylor. That one's kind of surprising. Baylor's been pretty bad the last couple of years. Don't sleep on them this year, though, even though I know most of you are. Uh, they're going to surprise some people this year. Lost to OU. That's okay. Most teams would lose to OU. And then you lost to TCU. One of those games maybe you hope to win about half the time. Last year happened to be one of the times you didn't win it. And then you lost to Iowa State. Again, a team that some college football fans just see the name Iowa State. And how'd you lose? Iowa State's been a pretty good team over the last couple of years. And uh, actually, this year, 2019, could be one of Iowa State's best years ever. We'll see. So five and seven, three and six. All right, I did a Kansas State preview and prediction video heading into last offseason. So just like always, I'm going to put the ending screen of that video up for you right now. And we'll see how right or wrong I was. You can either laugh at me or I can brag. I had them at five and seven, and they went five and seven. So Uncle Lou was, was dead on the money in terms of overall record. I have them losing to Baylor, Oklahoma State, and who else? Uh, well, you can see who I had them losing to compared to who they actually uh, lost to, which, of course, Mississippi State, West Virginia, Texas, Baylor, OU, TCU, uh, Iowa State, those seven teams there. So not bad. Uh, I, I think I, I just had Baylor and Oklahoma State switched around, it looks like. So pretty good. I almost hit this dead on the money. Only one game off here. Switch Baylor and Oklahoma State, and I would have had it right on, right on. All right, like we mentioned, Skeletor is – I mean, not Skeletor. I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep saying Skeletor. Bill Snyder is gone. In comes Chris Kleeman or Kleiman. I can't – you know, I don't know. Again, I don't name these people, okay? So I just do the best I can to pronounce their names wrong. Now, if you don't know that name, and it would be no embarrassment if you didn't, um, he has been the head coach at North Dakota State over the last several years. Who's North Dakota State? FCS team that has won four of the last five FCS national titles. If you're one of these people that watches College Game Day every week, College Game Day is broadcast live from North Dakota State on at least one occasion that I know of over the last couple of years, and, and maybe more than that, and I'm just not remembering. But in any case, they've been the most dominant FCS program 
probably in history over the last four or five years, borderline unbeatable. Like I mentioned, winning four of the last five F S uh, FCS uh, uh, championships. They, they have a real playoff there too. So there's no denying that they were the best, right? Great defense and run the ball. That's what they did at North Dakota State. Great defense and run the ball. That's what Chris Kleeman is looking to bring to Kansas State. Or is it? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Well, we'll see. I, I, I wondered what would happen if there was a team in the Big 12 that really put all their eggs into defense and run the ball. Now, Texas has a good defense, but they really can't run the ball. They struggled big time last year running the ball. TCU has ran the ball in the past, but they've been most successful running the ball when they've had a quarterback that could run around. We really haven't seen a team in the Big 12 be successful with a sort of uh, Alabama approach from seven, eight years ago, you know, smothering defense, ground and pound, run the ball out. We'll see if Kleeman keeps his sort of same style of football that he had at North Dakota State, if he tries to instill that at Kansas State, or if he looks around the Big 12 and goes, uh oh, you know, we got to score some points here, better find a quarterback that can throw the ball. We'll see. Um, but we'll see. Offensive coordinator Courtney Messingham. Shout out to Kansas State and uh, Chris Kleeman in hiring a female offensive coordinator. Man, listen, it's 2019. You know, hashtag me too, I guess. Uh, Courtney Messingham. Uh, yep, uh, so, uh, but yep, last year your offense was last in the Big 12, though, Kansas State fans. So you better hope, uh, you better hope this lady knows what she's doing. You were dead last in scoring and dead last in total offense in the Big 12. And everyone knows Big 12 is king in the offense. If you can't score and you can't move the ball in the Big 12, you're likely to have a five and seven season, which is what you had last year. Running back situation at Kansas State, not good. You lost your top four running backs. It reminds me of Georgia's wide receiver situation. Uh, but yeah, you lost your top four running backs uh, are gone, uh, including uh, what's Alex Barnes, I believe was his name is, uh, you know, he led the conference in rushing as a junior. Uh, you got a transfer from Ball State that's probably going to start. Good luck with that. Uh, we'll see how it works out for you. Now, you do get your quarterback back, Skylar Thompson. He's okay, right? I mean, in a league this, the, where, where teams are scoring 40 and 50 and 60 points a game and you got back-to-back -back Heisman winners and you got Sam Ellinger scoring 40-plus touchdowns, um, you know, uh, Purdy at Iowa State gets a lot of attention. Hard to stand out as a quarterback in the Big 12. And Skylar Thompson doesn't really stand out, but he's not terrible. And you get him back. No reason why he can't be a little bit better this year than he was last year, unless the coaching change sort of sets him back. Offensive line, almost everybody returns. So you should be good to go there. Wide receivers. I would say Kansas State has a group of solid wide receivers but not really any one elite wide receiver. And it, it could be the case that you're better off having a group of good wide receivers than you are having one great one that a team can focus on and try to shut down. We'll see, but good, not great wide receivers. Uh, you have two, I think, that sort of stand out to me as sort of potential guys that maybe could have like a breakout year. You got this Shown, uh, if that's his name, and Knowles, is that his name? I, again, I don't name these people. But anyway, so sort of a mixed bag on offense, right? You get your quarterback back. That's always good. Offensive line, most of your starters return. I talked about that on yesterday's video. You can't overestimate the importance of having an experienced offensive line. Running back situation, complete and total guessing game. No one knows. You may have a running back hiding on that roster that ends up being really, really good. Or you may have two or three running backs on that roster that have no business being anywhere near a Power 5 team. We have no way to know because all four of the running backs you played last year, they're all gone. Your top four backs are gone. The transfer from Ball State looks to be the main guy heading in. So a mixed bag on offense. Defense, new defensive coordinator, uh, Hazleton, right? Aggressive, blitz. He's going to play tight bump man coverage on the outside. He better hope he's got some good corners. That's all I can say because in the Big 12, if you're going to play press man coverage on the outside in the Big 12 and you don't have really good to elite corners, that's a recipe for disaster. I mean, you look at Oklahoma, they got three or four NFL wide receivers on that team. Texas has got some good wide receivers. I mean, there's good wide receivers all at Oklahoma State. I mean, these teams throw the ball. I, I mean, I love this style of defense. I, I love this is my favorite style of defense. Aggressive, 
pressure the quarterback, put your corners out there on an island, uh, tell them to lock their man down, bump press coverage, man coverage. I, I love that style of defense. But if you don't have corners, it, it all revolves around those two corners. If you don't have corners who can who can cover those guys out there, uh, you know, you end up getting burned over and over and over again. But that's sort of the uh, the style that Hazleton is bringing to Kansas State. We'll see how it works out. Now, along the defensive line, you only return two starters on the defensive line, but they're, they're, they're both three-year starters. So they were good when they got there. Uh, they've played the entire time they've been there. They've got a ton of experience, three years now. So your defensive line experienced, not overly talented, though, and not especially deep. Um, but those two guys there are, you're good, to, you know, those two are good. After that, a little bit of a drop off. You don't want any injuries on the defensive line this year if you can help it. Linebacker, huge question mark here at linebacker. You lose some, you got some coming back with some experience. None really stand out or jump out at you when you look up their, their stats or watch them play. Just sort of a ho hum linebackers. Not terrible, not great we'll see with this new defensive scheme, you know, with a lot of blitzes, more aggressive play style on defense, sort of a flying to the ball type thing. We'll see if any of these linebackers can sort of uh, rise up to the occasion, maybe play better this year. We'll see. Defensive backs, you get about half of them back and about half are gone. So you got some question marks there too. Now, like every other team, Kansas State rotates players in and out during the season. So if you lose a starter, it doesn't mean like the guy behind him has never played college football before, but people are starters for a reason. You got to replace a couple of them on the back end. Uh, you know, I, I'm more confident in the offense looking good year one here in this new system than I am the defense. You've just got too many question marks to me at defense, really on all three levels. And if I'm a Kansas State fan, I'm scared to death uh, of this aggressive blitz heavy defense that it, at least it looks like Hazleton is going to try to run because, like I said, if you if you try to run that style of defense in the Big 12 and you don't have the players to run it successfully, you're going to give up a lot of 40 and 50 yard touchdown passes. We'll see. But let's put the schedule up on the screen here for Kansas State. Do like we always do. We'll go through it game by game, try to figure out an overall win-loss record and where these wins and losses could possibly come. You start off with a home game against Nichols win uh they're a run-of-the-mill fcs team um they were ranked for a little while last year in the fcs but again none of these fcs schools should ever beat a power five school um kansas state not exactly an elite power five but let's be real it's not like they're one of the worst either they're not oregon state or rutgers or tennessee or arkansas they're better than all those teams you would expect Kansas State, even with an entirely new coaching staff and some new schemes on both sides of the ball, you would expect Kansas State to win this game at home. I have you as a win. Bowling Green week two, I think, is a much tougher game. Uh, this is a team that puts some pretty good uh, teams on the field every so often. This is a dangerous game to me. If things don't go well early in the, in, in the season here, in other words, if, if if this new offense and this new defense just takes a while to sort of figure itself out, this is one of those games that people could be laughing about on Sunday morning. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and give you a win, but this is no gimme here in my opinion, but I've got you at 2-0. and Now you got to go on the road for your last non-con game of the year at Mississippi State uh, loss. Um, you know, Mississippi State, disappointing year last year in my opinion. Um lost to some teams really they had no business losing to not sure about the head coaching decision they've made there we'll see how much rope they give that guy out there but still a better team than kansas state you lost to vandy a couple of years ago you lost to mississippi state last year and a down year for them this is year two now in the new coaching staff at mississippi state so you would expect them to take a step forward whereas kansas state year one breaking in a new coaching staff it's on the road at mississippi state Starkville, way too much cowbell. You catch your first loss of the season. You're sitting at two and one. That takes you into your first bye week. You get two this year. So does everyone else. Come out of that on the road at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is a team that no one talks about outside of Oklahoma State fans, really. And maybe some OU fans with some trash talk. But Oklahoma State is one of these teams that seems like consistently is winning eight, nine games. Sometimes they win 10. They can't ever seem to get over the hump. 
one of the most entertaining coaches in all of college football, this Gundy out there with the speeches that he gives about, you know, he's a man and he's 40, and which now I think he's 48 or 49. Uh, you know, he went this Twitter tirade he went on last year, not on Twitter, a press conference where he he went on a rant about Twitter. It's hilarious. If you haven't seen it, look it up. I've played some clips of it in videos before. Um, anyway, I, I actually like Oklahoma State this year. I think they could potentially be the third best team in the Big 12. And with a few breaks, uh, could finish second in the Big 12. Now, obviously, everyone is going with OU in Texas, including me. But when you start talking about dark horses, you know, and, and which teams and, and which conference could maybe upset one of the big boys and, and find a way to make it to the conference title game, I think Oklahoma State is at least a part of that conversation. And I think you lose on the road there in Stillwater. Now, you come back home and play Baylor. Now, I'm going to be honest with you here. People are sleeping on Baylor. I, Baylor has been terrible the last couple of years coming out of the whole Art Browles mess with the covering up the sexual assaults and all that kind of, uh, I mean, just a terrible situation that was going on down there and people wrote them off and they had a couple of bad years. But if you go back to before that, Baylor was a pretty good team almost every single year. I mean, eight, nine, 10 wins. Of course they had, uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name now, uh, Griffin, uh, RG3, Robert Griffin III, quarterback there. And I mean, I know that was a long time ago now. I think Baylor, Baylor's not back to that. But they're not the Baylor you think they are. They're going to be better than you think they are. They're going to beat you, Kansas State. And it's a home game, but I still think Baylor wins. That's your third straight loss. You're sitting at two and three. You got a bye week. Come out of that. Doesn't get any better for you. You have back-to-back -back games with TCU and OU. I think you lose both of those games. TCU is another team with a coach that's been there forever, Gary Patterson. Has he been there 17, 18 years, something like that? Every four or five years, gets a really good team, wins nine or ten games. He's even won the Big 12, I believe, a time or two. Um, some top five teams even. Uh, so he's had some really good teams. One of the only teams in the Big 12 that consistently puts effort uh, forward on the defensive side of the ball. I think they beat you. Again, I would put Oklahoma and TCU in the same category as teams that if you're looking for a dark horse in the Big 12, those are two pretty good picks. And uh, Baylor would be like your super dark horse, I, even though I think they'll be better than people think. I don't, I don't think they're playing the Big 12 title game. But I do think Oak, Oak State and TCU have a slight chance, maybe Iowa State. Anyway, you're going to lose TCU <clears throat> at home. Following week, you get Oklahoma. I'm sorry. You know, back-to-back -back Heisman winners, yeah, they're gone. Bring Jalen Hurts in. Is he as good as, as Baker or Kyler? No. Um, but they don't need a quarterback that good to beat you, unfortunately. I've got you dropping now your fifth straight game. You're sitting at 2-5. and five. On the road at Kansas, another team with a new coaching staff, right? Les Miles, the grass eater, comes from uh, LSU, right? Took a couple of years off. Now he's back in coaching at Kansas. What he was thinking taking this job, I will never know. Um, it's one of two things. He's tired of, the, he's tired of pressure, because there was a ton of pressure at LSU, year in and year out. He's either tired of the pressure associated with big-time college football, so he chose Kansas as a place to sort of resurrect his coaching career, or no one wanted him. I honestly don't know which it is. Uh, I can't imagine anyone with choices winding up at Kansas. But nevertheless, that's where Les Miles is. You're going to beat him, though, in his first year at Kansas. Kansas State just has more talent than Kansas. Um, and to be honest, I'm not convinced Les Miles is a better coach than Cleman. I'm not con not Cleman. I'm sorry. Yeah, Cleman. I'm not convinced of that. We'll see now. Obviously, this is Cleman's first year in a Power Five, but he dominated the FCS. Les Miles, people have mixed opinions on Les Miles. Uh, some people think he's a really good coach. Some people think he's a terrible coach and uh, sort of a beneficiary of elite talent at LSU and a roster left over from Nick Saban and that kind of thing. I, I'm sort of on the fence there. I, I, you know, I don't think Les Miles is a terrible coach. I think he's a pretty good coach. Um, He's not beating Kansas State year one, though. You'll get a win there, uh, finally getting off that five-game losing streak. Bad news is you turn around the following week and go to Texas. That's that's a loss. Uh, is Texas back? Well, it depends what definition of back is. Back to, back to maybe losing three games this year instead of four like they did last year? Yeah, that's possible. Um, this won't be one of the ones they lose, though. They're going to beat you. West Virginia... West Virginia, another team with brand new coaching staff this year. Their coach quit. <laughs> Man, I, I can't get over the fact that there's a Power 5 coach who would voluntarily quit to take a job at a non-Power 5 school. But that's what happened at West Virginia. He's gone. Um, 
I don't think it'll matter. I think you lose that game. Now, your last two games of the year, at Texas Tech, home against Iowa State. Either one of these, you could lose both of these games. I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to give you a win at Texas Tech. I'm not sold on them. New coaching staff there, too, I believe, in Clingsbury gone. Defense, other than Oklahoma, Texas Tech might have the worst defense in the Big 12. I think you win on the road there. Iowa State, Iowa State is sort of a darling pick this year in the Big 12 to sort of upset the apple cart. And I do think Iowa State will be a good team. But here's what I think about teams about Iowa, like Iowa State. Teams like Iowa State who have close to enough talent to where if things go just right, they could give your Oklahomas and your Texases a run for the money, which is what Iowa State is. Those teams that do that, the, the, the problem is not OU and Texas. It's what happens when they play Kansas, right? Baylor, Texas Tech. Kansas State. Consistency is the issue with these sort of middle of the road teams that seem to play above their uh, talent level, which is what I think Iowa State is doing. And I really like Matt Campbell, their coach. In other words, that, it's a complicated way for me to say, I can imagine a, a, a scenario where Iowa State loses four or five games this year, which would tell you they're not an elite team, right? But they beat either Oklahoma or Texas. I don't think anyone would be completely shocked if Iowa State knocked off one of the big boys. But I don't think they're good enough and deep enough to play the type of football it would take to do that week in and week out over the course of the season. That's a long-winded way for me to say I think you get a win at home your last game of the year against Iowa State. I'm going to put some belief in Chris Kleiman here and the staff that he's hired that uh, Kansas State is a team that can get consistently better over the course of the season, even though the record might not reflect it because of where you're playing some really tough teams here, namely TCU, OU, and Texas, all in the second half of the season. I I'm going to give you a big win. It'll be your biggest win of the year. Iowa State still won't be enough to be bowl eligible for you, though. You'll finish the season at 5-7, and seven, missing bowl game by, uh, by one year. But same record you had last year, though. But... Don't be upset, Kansas State fan. If Kleeman is as good of a coach as he appeared to be at North Dakota State, then he may be able to turn Kansas State into a contender in the Big 12. We'll see. Obviously, Oklahoma is upper echelon in all of college football right now, a top three or four program over the last four, five, six years or whatever. It's going to take a lot to knock them off. But if Chris Kleeman turns out to be a pretty good coach, which all indications right now say that he is, I think things are looking bright. The future is looking bright. Things are heading in the right direction for Kansas State. Just hard to expect a lot year one like this. Anyway, that's it for Kansas State. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great morning.